Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habati fillah A question was asked Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Is there any chance you could explain the reason behind why Tawheed is hated from those who oppose it and why they do so? Jazakallah khairan In the most concise way that we can offer as an explanation it's just it's desires for example if you look at many of the groups and sects that have departed into uh, with the concept of tawhid that it's not that they hate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's not what we mean by they hate uh, tawhid but they hate the tawhid as propagated by the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that the Qur'an illustrates and that was held by the Salaf Salih and the Ahmad al-Din was sunnah throughout history that they have different interpretations often related to their desires because they felt they had a new ideology or madhab they were infect, uh, affected by philo uh, philosophical arguments for example how many Ashadis always want to debate about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the issue of a place, uh, Makan, or they say that, um, you know, he is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not above his throne. Uh, they do everything they can to flee one concept to another concept. One conceptualization from one sect not necessarily the sect of Ahl Sunnah, for example, the uh, Ahl Tashbi, those people who make a resemblance between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his creation. So Ahl Sunnah rejects that and the Ashadis reject that. However, Ahl Sunnah says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose above his throne. But we say that he rose above his throne in a manner that suits his majesty. Tabarak wa ta'ala, because he subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ar Rahman ala Ar Shastawa. The most merciful rose above his throne. They say, no. If you say rising, you've made a resemblance between Allah and his creation. Then you are Ahl Tashbi. This is their logic. They are, this is their inference and their logic, which they say this necessitates this. Ahl Sunnah says, la. It doesn't necessitate that. But we affirm it because Allah affirms it. We affirm it because the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, affirmed it. They say, no. We have to run away from Tashbi, which is good, but they go from one bid'ah to another bid'ah. They go to the extreme. Ahl Sunnah is in the middle. Allah said, Qala Allah, Qala Rasul. Qala Ahl Sunnah. They say, no, we need to go beyond what Ahl Sunnah says. We need to really distance ourselves from the concept of Tashbi by saying it means something else. Or by changing the alfad of the, the, the text. Instead of Estoa, Astoa means estola. I don't know where that, how that comes into the play in the Arabic language. I still haven't, to this day, figured out how they come up with that. And that could be my weakness in the Arabic language because I haven't found it in the, in the Arabic text and I haven't seen any of the ulama sunnah ever mentioning that from the classical uh, uh, scholars up until now and the people of Loga, the people of the Arabic language. So, so this is... Uh, causing them to hate the correct concept of Tawheed and the people of Tawheed. You understand? So it isn't that they hate, they don't hate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. We have to give credit where credit's due. But they don't believe in the correct interpretation. Most of these groups, they have their own interpretation. They have their own imams. Mukhalifina, Mukhalifina, Mukhalifun, they are those people who disagree with the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and what the Dalil shows us, what the Minhaj and methodology of Ahl Sunnah with Jama'ah is, they disagree. And so these arguments that they make generally, it has to do, it's based upon desires in some form or another. Regardless of whether it's manifested through ta'wil, through you know, chain, reinterpreting, reinterpreting the text, misconstruing the text, um, 
tahrif, you know, maybe changing the actual, uh, even the letters, tahrif al-ma'na, or tahrif, uh, 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 either changing the meaning, or changing uh, tahrif al-fav, you know, changing the actual text itself. You know, so there's various ways, or like uh, the Mu'attala, those groups, those sects, which believe in actually negating like the Jahmiya saying no. So the Jahmiya are another thing and, and the Ashadis reject them too. But their bid'ah is definitely bid'ah kufriya. For example, they say, they say, uh, yes, ar-Rahman, they say yes, he is ar-Rahman. He is ar-Rahman. He is the most merciful without mercy. He's the most merciful without mercy. So for them, the sifat don't mean anything. And then therefore, Ahl Sunnah says they disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they negate even that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sifat. They negate it because they say, they just say the name is okay. You can call him Ar-Rahman because we know that's in the Quran and the Sunnah. But it has no meaning because they're afraid of making a resemblance between the creator and the creation as well. But they flee to bid'ah kufriya. So they deviate in another way. They follow their desires in another way. So all of these are various ways in their distortion of the concept of tawheed. Since we've opened the door, another person commented about the three categories of tawheed. Okay? There's so many things in the shara that the ulama made istiqra. They deduced from the uh, from the text, the divine texts have clear evidence for these categories of Tawheed, for example. However, did the Prophet ﷺ say Tawheed has three categories? Did the Sahaba say that? No, they didn't say that. But this is what is implied from the Nasus. This is what is deduced directly from the Nasus. And so later scholars from the Tabi'een, Imam Abu Hanifa mentions, uh, if I recall in Fiqh al-Akbar, he mentions even Uluhiya, the Uluhiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so we find it in as far back as the text of Imam Abu Hanifa. And then later generations of scholars mentioning these concepts. So these... Concepts are not newly invented matters, but they are there implicit in the text, not explicit. There are many concepts, just like one of the guys, one of the uh, contemporary du'at said, you know, all this talk, talk about Tawheed in the Quran, the Quran doesn't have anything, and I can't remember the term he, he mentioned, I think about Tawheed. He said the Quran doesn't say Tawheed. This is an ignorant statement. This is not from someone who studied and definitely hasn't studied with Ahl Sunnah. This is an ignorant statement. Even though he's popular, you know, thousands of followers, and he's with Ikna and Isna and Ifna and, and Huna. He's with all of them. But that doesn't make him with credibility with Allah Azza wa Jal. And no credibility with Ahl Sunnah with Jama'ah. Because this is a, an ignorant, misguided statement. Because this is the assassin, your deen is Tawheed. So then to there say, well, the Quran didn't mention Tawheed. The Quran, many things, the scholars, when they come up with categories and when they come up with uh, terminologies, those terminologies and categories must come from the shara. They must come from the book and the sunnah somehow. They must be inferred and, and deduced and abstracted from the uh, kitab sunnah. So they have to have a basis. And they do. They may not have been articulated in that way, but they were mafhum. They were understood. Those concepts were there and understood. They weren't newly invented matters. So that's a, a big difference in understanding. Because otherwise you'd throw away so much of the shara that we talk about. Did the Prophet Sallallahu talk about maqasid al sharia? Did the Prophet Sallallahu talk about usul al fiqh? Usul al fiqh? And other things, he didn't have these terminologies, but from a hadith of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we hear fiqh mention. 
The Prophet said, Whoever Allah wants good for a person gives them fiqh or understanding the religion. So from that text alone, we understand there's something called fiqh, understanding of the deen. And that's in a uh, from a linguistic point of view. And then there's a shari definition. From a linguistic point of view, that fiqh fideen just means understanding of the religion. Fiqh to understand. And as a shara, uh, a shari term, then it has it has many more implications. You know, it's talking about, you know, related to the ahkama takhlifiya and things like this. You know, the the five ahkam, uh, you know, from wajib to mubah, uh, uh, wajib mustahab, mubah, makru, haram. You know, all those ahkam. So there, there's a whole science. Which is not made up, but it is derived. It is taken from the Nasus. And a last point I want to mention, while it's on the table, a lot of people criticize Salafis and criticize Ahlul Sunnati with Jama'ah and stuff like this and say, Where, where's this name? Uh, the Prophet ﷺ didn't say Ahlul Sunnati with Jama'ah. The Prophet ﷺ didn't say the Salaf al Salih. Okay, these terminologies and what distinguishes Ahl Sunnah, distinguishes the Salaf al-Salih, what distinguishes the Salafiyun, is these terminologies also mustanad min, min shara. They're also taken from the Sharia. They're also taken from the book and the Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf. Whereas if you find the Ashiris, Maturidiya, and all of these other sects, they mainly go back to names which are not in the shara, but to individuals. Why do you call yourself an Ashari? Why don't you call yourself a Muhammadi? Why do you call yourself a Maturidi? Maturidi. Why don't you call yourself a Umari or a Khattabi after Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala Is Abu Mansur afdal min Umar bin Khattab? Abadin radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So you, you see that there's a difference. The Ahl Sunnah is going from the text. That's why they say Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Ahl Athar, Ahl Sunnah, um, uh, Ahl Hadith. You know, all of these things that Muslim administer. The Salaf, Salaf al Saleh, Farqat al Najia. Okay? So these terminologies, this has to do with uh, terminologies uh, and how they're derived. And uh, those are things for further exploration for those who have the. Who can go into the uh, text and do the research? We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.